Could this be the last chance for an aerospace giant? Meet the Boeing T-7 Red Hawk, a jet that's not just training the next generation of pilots, but also standing at the crossroads of history. What you're seeing may well be the swan song of manned trainer aircraft. As the world leans towards unmanned systems or drones, the T-7 Red Hawk holds a unique place, potentially the last of its kind to teach human hands at the controls of supersonic fighters. For Boeing, the stakes are sky high. The T-7 isn't just another aircraft. It might be their final play in securing a fighter airframe contract. This jet could be the lifeline Boeing needs. A chance to soar once again in the competitive skies of military contracting. But Boeing isn't alone in this venture. With critical components crafted by Saab, the T-7 shares its DNA with the renowned JAS-39 Gripen. This partnership isn't just about building a trainer, it's about shaping the future of two aerospace giants. Make no mistake, the T-7 is critical. It is the stepping stone for pilots destined for the next generation air dominance or NGAD fighter. Join us as we unfold the story of the T-7 Red Hawk, how there are plans to make this into a fighter, why the Navy is interested, and why the T-7 is not just an aircraft training pilots, but the aspirations of two leading aerospace players and the future of man fighter jets. We are cleared for takeoff. Here we go. Pilotphotog.com As we mentioned, one of the T-7's missions will be to train the next generation of future NGAD pilots. And while most of us will not get to fly the NGAD, we can control a fleet of ships, thanks to today's sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Remember growing up and being fascinated with spaceflight? We've all dreamed of navigating the stars, and now you can take the role of a Star Trek Fleet Commander thanks to Star Trek Fleet Command. This game is an open world odyssey. From the Alpha to the Omega Quadrant, every sector is a new story, a new adventure waiting to be written in the stars. These stunning graphics bring the Star Trek universe to life, and it's free to play. As a Starbase Commander on the edge of civilized space, you can recruit iconic characters from the next generation, the original series, the J.J. Abrams films, Discovery, and more, including Kirk, Spock, Data, and Geordi. The great thing is with crossplay, you can command your ship from anywhere, desktop or mobile, with a Scopely account. The new Wave Defense introduces a new way for players to socially interact. Based on Wave Defense teams that transcend alliances, players defend a central point from waves of increasingly powerful enemies. Collaboration is the key to success. There are also new officers, Trip Tucker and Topol, along with 10 new Star Trek Enterprise theme missions and 10 side missions. I really enjoy how you can step into the shoes of legends like Kirk and Spock, command the Enterprise or other starships, and engage with advanced tech right out of Starfleet's archives. Battle with players worldwide, join a community of explorers, and forge alliances across the galaxy. It's not just a game, it's a universe of stories, strategies, and friendships. And get ready for the Kelvin Timeline, a new story that takes Star Trek into uncharted dimensions. It's a fresh narrative for both diehard fans and newcomers. So join me, Commanders, in Star Trek Fleet Command. Install now, dive into this rich universe, and show your strategy skills. Use my special link or scan this QR code on the screen. And if you're a new player, use the promo code for some extra content, Epic Shards of Kirk. Battle space pirates, explore the galaxy, and write your own Star Trek saga. You have the con, and the stars are calling. And now, back to the Red Hawk. The Boeing slash Saab T-7 is an aircraft that's more than just a trainer. It's become a symbol of international collaboration and cutting-edge technology. Born from a partnership between American aerospace giants Boeing and Sweden Saab, the T-7 Red Hawk has emerged as a front-runner in advanced jet training. The Red Hawk beat out contenders from Lockheed Martin and Leonardo, when back in September of 2018, the U.S. Air Force announced its choice of the T-7 for its TX program. In doing so, the Air Force has agreed to a $9.2 billion contract which calls for the purchase of some 
351 aircraft, 46 simulators, and the associated maintenance and support. It's hard to overstate how important and needed a new trainer is for the Air Force. For starters, the Red Hawk will be replacing a legend, the venerable Northrop T-38 Talon. The T-38 has trained generations of pilots since taking its first flight in the 1950s. However, as good as the Talon was and is, it's time for a replacement. The T-7 is advanced in every way compared to the T-38. For example, the Red Hawk is equipped with cutting-edge technology, from data links to simulated radar, which will prepare pilots for the rigors of modern warfare. Its all-digital technology and fully digital cockpit represent the pinnacle of pilot training, mirroring the advanced systems of fifth-generation fighters like the F-35 Lightning. Furthermore, the Red Hawk airframe is designed for high G and high angle of attack maneuvers, along with a strong emphasis on being easily maintained. Part of this was made possible by Saab's digital engineering software, which helped bring the airplane from the initial design to its first flight in just 36 months. The T-7's advanced digital production line means that it just takes 30 minutes to splice the aft section with the wings. Saab builds the aft section of the Red Hawk, and in 2019, Saab announced that it would open a U.S. manufacturing facility for the T-7 in Indiana with Purdue University. The Red Hawk's large canopy provides excellent visibility, and night operations have also been implemented in the design. The airframe has been built in a way to allow it to convert in the near future to an aggressor role for training pilots in the art of dogfighting as well as the ability to be converted into a light fighter slash attack role. More on that later. Getting back to the T-38 comparison, the T-7's single engine is the GE F-404, the same engine that is also found on the Legacy Hornet and early models of the Saab Gripen. This single engine puts out three times the thrust of the two engines found on the T-38. Additionally, with a max takeoff weight of just over 12,000 pounds, the T-7 should have a greater than 1 to 1 thrust ratio, thanks to the 17,000 pounds of thrust provided by the afterburning F-404 engine. And no doubt, you've noticed the rear section of the T-7 is sometimes painted red. Well, it all comes down to what's in a name. In a nod to a significant chapter in aviation history, the U.S. Air Force christened the aircraft as the T-7A Red Hawk in September of 2019. This designation serves as a homage to the legendary Tuskegee Airmen, renowned for their distinctively red-tailed aircraft, and also acknowledges the Curtis P-40 Warhawk, famously piloted by the 99th Fighter Squadron, the first African-American fighter squadron in the U.S. Army Air Force. Looking ahead to the future, as recent conflicts across the world have shown us, drone warfare is here to stay. Aircraft like the F-35 Lightning are designed to be combat information nodes, controlling the battle space with state-of-the-art avionics and sensor fusion. Part of this integration involves Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCAs. These advanced AI-powered unmanned aircraft are the cutting edge of warfighting and the 6th generation NGAD fighter, along with the B-21 Raider, are set to take full advantage of these drones. Given the fact that the T-38 has served for over 50 years as a trainer, the T-7 Red Hawk could represent the last manned trainer that the Air Force uses. It is without a doubt the dawn of a new era in fighter aircraft, and the T-7 has been designed with advanced avionics to take full advantage of it. Export Fighter Today, the F-16 is the most exported and popular fighter in the West. However, as the global fleet of F-16s begins to age out, many nations are looking to replace the Viper with either an upgraded option or another airframe. Boeing intends to offer an armed version of the T-7, which has been tentatively designated the F-7, to compete in the global export market. Given the fact that the Red Hawk is a clean sheet design and easy to maintain, there could be some serious competition in the multi-role light fighter attack export market. 
Some nations are still operating Northrop F5s, and the Red Hawk could also be a good fit here. The viability of the Red Hawk as an export fighter could be a blessing for both Boeing and Saab. Boeing, of course, has faced recent challenges in their commercial aviation business with the 737 MAX. And on the military business side of things, the long-running Super Hornet will cease production this year. This would leave Boeing without a contract for a fighter, assuming they do not get the NGAD contract. I've done a video all about the NGAD competition. You can check out that video after this one. For Saab, the situation is somewhat similar. Saab has tried for years to find an export market for its highly adaptable JAS-39 Gripen but has lost competitions in Europe to Lockheed's F-35 Lightning. The notable success for the Gripen was the adoption of the fighter by Brazil, which designated it the F-39E and F. Interestingly, Brazil also operates F-5s. As mentioned before, the Gripen A through D models also use the GE F-404 engine, and an export market for the Red Hawk would go a long way in keeping Saab's aerospace operations moving. Boeing has pitched the Red Hawk to the Brazilian Air Force, and given some commonality with the Gripen, this could be an easy sell for Boeing and Saab. The other customer for the Red Hawk could be the Navy, which is looking to upgrade from its T-45 Goshawk. Quick shout out to all of you who helped me with the pronunciation on my community post. A navalized version of the Red Hawk, known as the T-7B, has been submitted for the Navy's Tactical Surrogate Aircraft Program. This program seeks to find a new aircraft that can be used by the Navy as both an advanced trainer and adversary aircraft. In this role, the new aircraft would replace the T-45 as a trainer and the F-5 as an adversary. The winner of the Navy's proposal could lead to a sale of up to 64 aircraft. As the T-7A takes flight for the USAF, we are not just seeing a new training aircraft, we are witnessing the dawn of a new era in military aviation, one that blends heritage with innovation and the next generation of heroes. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications. If you'd like to help support this channel, check out today's sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Become a channel member or a patron, or check out my aviation themed merchandise. The T7 Red Hawk could be a game changer. Now you know. PilotPhotog.com